So when we're, when we're faced with a stress, when a stress situation takes place, I, I, I want you all just to, I want to just share just a few, a few different ways that we can go about this, okay? If we're, if, if we're dealing with somebody else, we're working with somebody, we're, we're assisting somebody, the first thing that we always can do is we can practice empathy, okay? And practicing empathy doesn't always come easy to everyone. However, when we make sure that we give people a safe space and an unfiltered space to share what's on their heart, what's on their mind, what's weighing them down, this can help or begin to help alleviate some of that stress. So first, that, that's what we can practice. This is something you can practice with yourself or this is something you can practice with somebody else. But the second thing right here is this, mindful self-compassion. Mindful self-compassion. John, what is that? So I've provided a resource sheet for you all. It's a couple of sheets actually uh, that give you a few more strategies, but also give you a few videos and things like that. It's a PDF. You'll get that after the recording, just so you can see some of these practices. But mindful self-compassion is you taking a moment and giving yourself some grace. Right? I know we all have our to-dos at the beginning of the day. We have a set list of items that we desire to accomplish. We want to get done what we want to get done. And when we don't, sometimes we beat ourselves up. When we didn't make all of our shots, we beat ourselves up. When we felt that we could have done better on our tests, we beat ourselves up. So I want you to begin to practice mindful self-compassion and that looks like you relaxing, saying, let me focus on the things that I did do today. Okay, I did this, check. I did that, check. Now, we're focusing on the things that we can control. Ultimately, there's no point in focusing on things that we cannot control. Because when we do that, we'll continue to stress ourselves out. We'll continue to wear ourselves thin. So focus on trying mindful self-compassion. And then the last thing is we just normalize. We, we can normalize therapy. And, and so you might say, John, my environment and my genetics. Nobody ever went to therapy. Nobody ever talked about therapy. Or some people might say, I can't even afford therapy. Right. So understanding these things, the first thing I, I would just encourage you to say is talking to some, finding one person that you trust. One. If it's a best friend, if it's a confidant, it's a, it's a mom, it's an uncle, it's a dad, it's a brother, it's a coach, it's an academic advisor. Find someone that you trust to talk to. People say, John, how do we start this conversation? What does that even look like? The first thing you just ask them is, how are you doing? One way I like to approach uh, reaching out to some of my friends, I've been doing this since the pandemic, and I say, how's your mental health? How's your mental health? Because what we do know is that this pandemic has put a lot of stress on people. We saw one out of 12 college students have said they felt depressed. And the reason they feel that is because their normal is getting disrupted. Their normal is getting shifted and shaped and turned all around and they're back home and now summer on campus and they're trying to get back into the routine that created a sense of security for them because ultimately structure creates security. So you want to begin to talk with someone. You want to encourage them to talk to someone. If it be you, if it be someone else. But I know some of the programs that we have on here, some of you all have sports psychologists. If you feel that this person is talking about hurting themselves or someone else, then we have to tell someone. However, there's also hotlines 
that are available, Suicide Hotline, Talk Space, and I have those resources available in that document that I'm gonna share after the presentation. But that is truly essential to make sure that we encourage them to talk to someone. But we always have to remember the ABCs always be caring. How would you want someone to treat you if you knew if if they knew that you were having a bad day? How would you want someone to approach you if you were going through it? Would you want them to tell you, man, just get over it? Would you want them to tell you, man, it's just that you're having a bad day? People say that sometimes not realizing how insensitive it is because this is the fifth day straight, but this is just the first day you're sharing it with someone. So always be caring and lastly, remind them that it's okay to not be okay. With this Instagram filter, all these different things, we crop it, we cut it, we post the perfect picture, we post the perfect tweet. And I've been there, I've done it. I mean, I've typed it, I've tweeted it, I've deleted it. I posted on Instagram and deleted the picture because I didn't get no likes. I've been there. But ultimately, we have to normalize and humanize ourselves. Coaches, some of us, I've heard Dr. Tim Elmore talk about it. We have to be velvet bricks. Now we have to check in, see how our players are doing. How are you doing? No, like off, like off the record. We're not talking about sports. We're not talking about your education. How are you doing mentally? Then they began to share a little bit. Like, okay, well, you know, I, I know that's tough. I, I know you're going through it, but we still have to set a standard. That's what the Velvet Brick is all about. The Velvet Brick talks about being still strict or structured, but still being soft and empathetic. So we have to remember to always be I'll, I'll, I'll always be caring. We can't just tell them to put it, put on a happy face. Right? That's, that's, that's just not gonna, that, that's, that's just not gonna cut it. That's, that's, that's not gonna cut it.